Hello, everyone. I am Joyce Wagner, Director of Revenue Cycle Management Services at ASLI, Inc., and your moderator today. ASLI is proud to continue offering complimentary webinars on important topics for behavioral, mental, and addiction treatment providers. Thank you for joining us today to discuss making reimbursements for psychiatric or residential rehabilitation services in the state of Maryland easier. Billing for PRP and residential services can be complex and manual processes. So we're happy to say we've developed a solution that greatly simplifies this process for our clients. Our objectives today are to discuss PRP licensing and accreditation, billing challenges for PRP in the state of Maryland, present ASLI PRP billing process, demo the function, and address the audience's questions. We're joined today by a panel of experts. If you have any questions for the panelists, please enter them through the Q&A. The feature on Zoom. We will have time at the end of the webinar where we will answer these questions as well as those that were sent to us prior to the webinar. Peggy Lavin is an LCS LSCW Director of Behavioral Health for the Accreditation Guru. While with the Joint Commission, Peggy was actively involved with Maryland's Behavioral Health Administration, licensing and PRP providers for required accreditation for obtaining a behavioral health license. Heather Junkins is with ASLI. She is a prior authorization specialist as an expert medical coder with 15 years of revenue cycle management experience. Heather specializes in securing residential levels of care, prior authorization, as well as inpatient and outpatient billing in mental health and substance use. Peggy, Heather, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Hi, Joyce. Thanks for inviting me to join you. We welcome you. Let's start with Peggy. Peggy, you were in the thick of things while at the Joint Commission, actively involved with the Maryland BH Administration licensing and PR pre providers for required accreditation for obtaining a BH license. Is Maryland unique with that requirement? Well, Joyce, uh, saying in the thick of things is a good description for the frequent communication and collaboration between the state of Maryland, the accrediting bodies, and the providers as Maryland converted from their old license certification processes to the current community-based behavioral health license. Um, it was uh, a pretty active time and it took many years. So it started with Maryland thinking about what they wanted, what their expectations were, and um, the different models, and then a lot of dialogue with the accrediting bodies who were interested in being approved. Uh, at, at that time, I worked for the Joint Commission, and we at the Joint Commission, as well as the other accrediting bodies, needed to take a look and explain our survey process and our standards to the state of Maryland to make sure that they were compatible with their expectations, where, where they wanted to get to in terms of this license. And um, that, that took some time. And then once approved, all the accrediting bodies worked very hard and very closely with the providers, including the psychiatric rehabilitation program providers in Maryland to get accredited. They had to be accredited, I think it was by Ju uh, July, January, excuse me, January of 2018, in order to apply for the license, the new license, which was effective April of 2018. Um, you asked if it was unique, so I'm going to get to that uh, specific question. Um, it is considered an accreditation-based license. And that means that in order to provide psychiatric rehabilitation programs and services in Maryland, you have to have a license. And in order to get the license, you have to be accredited. 
So it's an accreditation based license. This is unique in that the state of Maryland's degree of um, uh, reliance on the accrediting body for both quality of care and providing a safe uh, service delivery is very unique. It, it, it's probably the strongest state accreditation mandated license that I'm aware of. If it's not the top, it's certainly in the top three, but I think it might be the strongest. So let's set the stage a bit further. What accrediting bodies are approved for PRP providers? Good question. So there are four approved accrediting bodies for the PHP providers in Maryland. Um, that would be CARF International, the Joint Commission, and it's the Joint Commission's Behavioral Health Care Accreditation Program that is approved for the um, psychiatric rehabilitation providers. Um, the Council on Accreditation, which is commonly called COA, or goes by its acronym, COA. And the fourth approved body is the uh, Accreditation Commission for Health Care, again, commonly known by its acronym, um, ACHC. On the Maryland website, there are actually charts that um, for each of those four accrediting bodies. And on the left side, they list the um, Medicaid reimbursed program or service. And to the right, they talk about what crosswalk to the accrediting bodies category of services and standards. So it gives you a guide as to what standards apply. And on, the, on each of these four charts, the three psychiatric rehabilitation services are listed. The psychiatric rehabilitation program for adults, psychiatric rehabilitation program for minors, and the residential psychiatric uh, rehabilitation program. And so we have four, right now we have four approved accrediting bodies, short answer. Yeah. What is the key message to licensed PRP providers? What would you share with them? Um, so a licensed PRP provider means that they're already accredited. They've done, they've gone through the initial accreditation preparation, maybe have gone through a reaccreditation, and they are now accredited and licensed to provide PRP services. Um, I would say two things. One is that when you are awarded accreditation, that provider is committing to operate in continuous compliance with all applicable standards. So uh, they go into the maintenance mode. They have to operate in compliance at all times, not just during the survey. Um, second, I would say that, um, uh, and many of the providers on the call probably know this, accreditation is awarded for a period of time. It's not forever. And so there is a renewal, a reaccreditation process. And that can be one year, three years, or four years, depending on which accrediting body you have selected and the type of accreditation award that accrediting body has given you. So um, when you're coming up for renewal, there is the reaccreditation preparation. I would say that if you do well during the maintenance mode, you know you operate in compliance with applicable standards. The um, it's a lighter lift for the reaccreditation survey than it was for the initial uh, accreditation uh, survey, but during that period of time, you do need to be aware of any new or revised standards. If you change your operations, uh, you have to, one, make sure that you have reflected that change in your written plans, policies, and procedures, and that it's still in compliance with the applicable um, standard or standards. So maintenance mode and be prepared for reaccreditation, two key messages. And how does a provider meet the accreditation requirement to obtain the license to operate? Ah, so in order to operate, you have to be accredited. To be fully accredited, you have to be providing services, uh, PRP services to individuals. Um, so in order to provide services, you have to be accredited. So in order to avoid that dilemma, <laughs> Uh, the uh, all four accrediting bodies have what I call a two-step process. So an initial provider 
um, would be required to uh, go through this two-step process. So the first step is an initial survey that is a uh, looking at compliance with a subset of the applicable standards. And if you demonstrate compliance, you are awarded a temporary accreditation. With that temp temporary accreditation, uh, you can then apply for your license, get your license, start providing services. And then within a period of time, and it's usually within six months, the um, provider needs to go to the second step, which is to have a second survey. And it's what we call a full survey, looking at compliance with all applicable standards. And at that point, they can be fully accredited. And again, as I said previously, uh, that would last for a year, three years, four years, uh, depending on their accrediting body. And do you have any experience that once they do get licensed and operating in Maryland, providing those PRP services, how easy it is for them to bill on that provider portal? Um, well, um, I don't have direct experience, but I hear things. <laughs> I hear things from providers. And what I hear is that um, accreditation and the billing process complement each other. So that accreditation requires certain clinical case management activities, on-site, off-site visits, you know, different services are required and documented. Accreditation is big on documentation. So that um, providing those activities and documenting fuels the billing system. And the billing system complements accreditation because it prompts the provider to do these activities at the right frequency, make sure it's documented correctly, so on and so forth. And um, of course, people say to me all the time that um, effective and efficient reimbursement <laughs> is a key factor in the health of their organization. And so, uh, you know, any system that supports accreditation, because they have to be accredited, and gives them an efficient and effective billing system. Uh, promotes good health for the organization. Thank you, Peggy. You're we welcome. Appreciate your sharing your experiences. I think you're aware that ASLI has automated the PRP billing claims processing for Maryland, and the codes for on site and off site visits are set up in the client's charge master, and claims are auto generated during the month when those appointments are checked in. After the month is closed, ASLI auto-generates the monthly claim, which is the claim that pays the provider, based upon the current Cascade fee schedule, which is updated annually. Did you have any input when you were working on this project on the Cascade schedule at all? You're asking me that question, Joyce? Yes. I did not have any direct experience. Um, you know, I, I had gen, I had conversations with people about uh, different electronic systems. And um, when I was at the Joint Commission, what we would do is we would give some um, resources, some references, and okay. uh, tell people, you know, call, get the information, make your selection. Very good. So we are very pleased that we are able to now have the PRP automated um, billing. And we're going to transition now to a demonstration of the PRP billing and ASLI based upon the current Cascade fee schedule, which Andrew has so kindly put up on your screen. This Cascade fee schedule is updated on an annual basis. So anybody that would choose or select ASLI to bill their PR, to do their PRP billing, will know that we automatically update this chart. And so all of the claims that are going to be sent out for to Maryland for the PRP billing are auto-generated and done according to their fee structure. Okay. Heather is going to demonstrate the ease of use of processing PRP claims in ASLI. Heather, let's show them how we have made this so easy. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Joyce. So on my screen now, you see the ASLI calendar. And as Joyce mentioned before, these um, 
type of claims are generated by the on or off site appointments that are scheduled and then checked in. You can see here an example of this. This is a demo and a mock account, so no important information given here. You can see we've got the PRP contact note off site checked in. Once you get to the end of your month and you are ready to bill your PRPs, you would simply come into the RCM services, choose your auto generate claims, choose your date range for whatever month you're billing, and then click search. All of your PRP appointments will display below as listed. You can open them up and see more of a description with each line item. You can see your on-site and off-site are both included in this. For the different dates of service, once you have chosen these and you have to have at least six and we'll do a blended, let's start at the bottom. So we'll do the third, fourth, fifth, the sixth, seventh, and the 10th. You would then finalize these claims Give it just a moment to think. And you can see now that you've got your blend of on and off site PRP appointments that are in progress, which will change to success. Once we're in our claims screen, We can filter down to look for the specific patient that was just filed, and then we can show the claim. So now you see you have your H2018, which is your blend of on and off site. You would have a place of service of 49, indicating that that was a blend. And this is a demo account, so sometimes it may not work as it will in everyone else's account. And that would be it. Your modifiers will attach correctly according to a child or adult PRP service. Your charge will automatically come in. And the month of July will be billed out as a cascade fee schedule instead of each individual appointment being painstakingly entered into your portal. All PRP services require pre-auths as well. That's a very simple process. We will attach that to each of the PRP claims according to the dates of service that they are attached to, and they will display here on this claim level details tab. So all information necessary to get your PRP claims paid and successfully processed in a quick and timely manner will go out with your PRP cascade system within ASLI. No more spending hours and hours on the portal, entering one claim at a time over and over and over again. We have placed that redundancy with speed and efficiency. Okay. Thank you, Heather. We appreciate it. You're welcome. So what we've done in ASLI is cut out that human error and increase that first time pass rate. When you use a charge master and automate the claims processing, you make one entry for your code sets and your charges and then attach them to either appointments or encounters. And when an appointment is checked in or an encounter, the documentation for the service is finalized and signed by the provider. It also will kick out a claim. Those claims go in queue and go out in nanoseconds, one right after the other. No more worrying about clicking, duplicating demographics, duplicating anything. It's refreshing that we have gotten to where we are and we're quite proud of it. To summarize, the ASLI RCM solution allows you to boost your first time pass rate, which increases your revenue stream. Automate on-site and off-site visits via integrated appointment check-ins or sign documentation. Gather records of psychiatric and re residential rehabilitation services for billing. 
calculate the number of on-site, off-site, or blended services provided by patient to determine by the current cascade fee schedule what needs to be billed. Then generate claims for each service type with the correct place of service, the correct modifiers, and the blend. And then provide billing reconciliations and reviews before claim submission. Now we want to shift to the Q&A portion. Uh, Peggy, I'm not certain if you answer, but a question is that came in, is it difficult to obtain a license to operate? Um, well, it, the first step, as I've mentioned, is to become accredited. And that's really going to be the um, longest process for you. Uh, because once you have that, then you apply for um, the license. And as I mentioned, the license is very dependent and um, upon accreditation. Uh, so it's the accreditation preparation uh, period. You know, I might mention, Joyce, that um, I'm no longer with the Joint Commission. I probably should have done that disclaimer earlier. Um, I was with the Joint Commission during this um, license change in Maryland. Um, I'm currently with Accreditation Guru, as, as uh, my sign line says. And um, whether someone is trying to select a crediting body or um, do initial accreditation to get their license, or they're in the maintenance mode or preparing for reaccreditation, uh, Accreditation Guru helps make life easier. You make life right. easier for billing. We make life easier for accreditation. And okay. we have- and that um, you do. We do. And we have consultants who are amazing and they're experts in all four of the approved accrediting bodies. So we can help you. We have lots of information about the four accrediting bodies if you're still trying to decide. And we have experts in each of the four uh, to help you with initial accreditation, that maintenance mode or reaccreditation. And so they have to be accredited by Joint Commission or CARF first? Joint Commission, CARF, Council on Accreditation, or uh, Accreditation Commission for Healthcare, ACHC. One of the four. All four. I would, but I would say this. I'm I know for sure that all three, CARF, Joint Commission, and um, Council on Accreditation are approved for the um, residential psychiatric rehabilitation program. But currently on the website at Maryland, it's not showing that the um, uh, Accreditation Commission for Healthcare is accredited for the residential. It does show that they're accredited for the um, psychiatric rehab program for adults and minors. I don't know if that's current. Um, I'm always concerned when you put something up on the website that somebody's responsible to keep updating. Um, but um, that's something to check with. But we have experts in all four. So whoever you choose, we can be helpful. Or whoever you are accredited by, we can be helpful. And I can just mention to anyone that's viewing this webinar, we can put you in touch with Peggy by simply giving getting in touch with that uh, uh, email that Andrew provided to you. And also, I want to talk to Heather. Do we offer billing services outside of Maryland? Oh, yes. Asley offers billing services to everyone. We currently serve clients in 33 different states. So um, although we love our Maryland clients and want to offer them this amazing uh, time-saving system for their PRP claims, we do all, uh, all types of claims in all areas of the country. And so will our billing system work for mental health and substance use disorder programs other than PRP? Absolutely, yes. We can be as complex or as simplistic as you need us to be. ASLI is completely customizable to each and every facility, no matter how big or small they are. Thank you again to our panel for joining us today. If you still have questions after this webinar, reach out to ASLI at hello at asli.com and we will be sure to answer them. Thank you to the attendees for joining us today. ASLI will continue to offer webinars on topics 
related to behavioral and mental health, along with substance use disorder professionals. Be sure to follow us on an Eventbrite to stay up to date on more free webinars, and you won't have to wait long. We hope you'll register and join us next week, Thursday, for a webinar on prior authorizations. We have uh, panelists on that webinar that together, I think they have like a hundred years of experience in prior authorizations. Thank you for attending today and goodbye. Thank you, Joyce. Nice to meet you, Heather. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.